Uh, John, when you're talking, the mic really, you have to talk into the mic. It's like a million miles away. Okay. I'm just going to give you. <laughs> this is Film Photography Podcast. My name is Michael Rosso. I'm here with John Fideli. What? <laughs> Mr. Matt Marash. Hey, what's going on, guys? Today, we're going to be talking about scanning. There are always things popping up on Kickstarter. And one of the mm -hmm. more recent things is uh, Mr. Ethan Moses has a Camerodactyl Mongoose Automatic Scanning Assistant. Now, is this what? someone you hire? What is this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, come no. So, so this is kind of in the same vein of those skin you know they're not scanners themselves so it's it's all oh, it's similar to what we're seeing from like negative supply and pixelator and some of those other tools that are helping hold your film you know pretty flat and carry it across but what ethan has done with his uh, his new holder which uh, just just finished on kickstarter i think just before we started recording here it's a device that it's 3d printed and it measures it has little sensors to measure the distance between the frames mm -hmm. and it also views like when you're at film base whether it's negatives or positives and it talks to your dslr or mirrorless camera and tells it when to fire when it's lined up what? it's a really cool concept i have one of the pre-production units that i tested and did like a, a little video overview with uh, i did the video overview in a very rushed manner and i made a few mistakes but i still had really really cool results out of it i gave it the best chance to kind of work and it's it's what's really encouraged me for the world of dslr mirrorless scanning i think it's very viable at this point world's better than i can get with my v700 even at the highest settings and in less than even with all of the going into photoshop or you know whatever software and doing your corrections we're still talking three to four times faster than the normal workflow of waiting on scans hmm. How does a consumer, film shooter, know? I mean, there are a few options out there now. How do you find these options? Um, probably the easiest way is just kind of uh, look at, you know, look at what's out there from uh, from resellers. I know some of the reseller. I know a lot of folks are carrying the negative supply, which kind of uh, sits on the higher end of the spectrum. There's the pixelator, which is a little bit under that. Those are just holding systems. So you still need a light source. You still need the camera. You still need the lens, something to hold it, like a copy stand. But this is a way to help somewhat automate or give you some consistency uh, mm -hmm. in the process. Uh, for what's out there, it is kind of hard. There's, I don't think there's anybody that carries all the different options themselves. So that part is hard. You kind of have to search for film scanning holder or film scanning, uh, I, I said assistant, but uh, film scanning device. You, right. can, you can look that up, but yeah, really just, the the flatbed scanning options are so few now that it really makes sense and uh i'm not going to pretend like i wasn't using gear that uh that was uh that was like cheap i was using some pretty high-end stuff but i wanted to see like what's this look like at its best you know mm -hmm. if you're a lab or you're an enthusiast that has a, a really juiced up digital camera can you do something really cool with it and then i also tried it with a rebel like a 400 dollar, you know costco big box special uh, rebel and it actually still was right at the same level that I could get with uh, with the Epson V700 in you know under a quarter of the time, which wow. that was impressive. Wow! And is this commercially available right now? It is. So after the Kickstarter, Ethan's committed to doing fulfilling those first, and then once all of those are filled, which I think should be, we're looking like Q1 or Q2 of 2021, then those are going to be uh, retail available which is which is pretty cool and it's it's going to ship with whatever camera system you specify so if you have a a canon digital nikon sony fuji panasonic all that stuff it'll ship with the right uh, triggering cable for the for the device right and you guys heard of the pixelator oh yes mm -hmm. that's mostly for the uh phone though isn't it um uh, the they apps yeah apps. so the, they have i think they have an app that integrates with it but it's really yeah it's just a really neat little diffuser light Hold source it. that holds it yeah right. John, did you get involved with the Pixelator? Yeah, I did. You I did? Have one. Yeah. Nice. You have one? Yes. Do you, but do my you, phone app. Do you use it? Yeah, just to get quick scans. Okay. On the oh, phone. That's why, Matt, you're saying so there are different the levels. Yeah, I think there's different levels, and I think it's cool that there's options that kind of meet people where they're at with it. But right. um, what, what interested me in the, the Mongoose, what, and, you know, when Ethan was talking about it, he initially had, you know, reached out to both of us, you know, here at FPP and like said, hey, do you guys want to look at this? And 
I was trying to think of it from like, who's the most frustrated with scans? And well, at home, I'm not because I don't shoot a lot of 35, but when I'm at work, you bet I hate scanning. Like I see, we see like two to three dozen rolls of black and white film every week at Midwest Photo. And those rolls have to get scanned a lot of the time. And you can't and push that work off to your assistant? <laughs> I'm just, not, I don't have an assistant yet. That's my oh, problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have an imaging department. I usually do the developing side of it, but there's times where I'll also end up right. doing a little bit of the scanning. But even our, our team that does the scanning, oh my goodness, it's a, lo- it's a long slog because we have to strip right. them down into the strips of four or five. We have, we have dueling V800s there. And even running two V800s into mm-hmm. a network system, wow. it still takes forever to get, you know, good quality scans for people's film. And from a commercial standpoint, you're trying to find, okay, is there an automated scanner that is better than a flatbed? And it's automated. I can just walk away. You know, it was kind of like, um, you know, John was mentioning before we started recording, like, can I go do, do a wash? Mm-hmm. <laughs> can, can I not worry about it? And that's where I think Ethan's setup is pretty neat. You set your camera up like you're about to do the manual scans and it has an automatic mode. So it pulls the first couple of frames through. That's it crazy. looks looks for that film base and then it starts going through the whole roll. You can have it automate the DSLR scanning of a roll of film in just over a minute. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And if this thing is tethered to a, uh, you know, your computer, like through Lightroom or Capture One, that means your, your digital files are already in your workflow. And if you have someone that's a little bit more savvy with Photoshop, with Lightroom, with Bridge, with uh, ca- the one I'm trying to get better with is Capture One, you can create presets within there. So I can basically copy a default setting for adjusting a curve on color negative or, or black and white. I hit control, like, you know, control shift V, my paste button, and now all of my scans are already in the ballpark. And if I'm using a higher res camera, so for my, my higher end tests, I used a Sony a7R4, which that's a full frame camera that has 60 megapixels. So even like a, a really kind of like loose crop on my 35 millimeter frames, I was getting scans that were close to 50 megapixels. You can't even get close with, to that with a, an Epson V700. And it would take two hours just to do the passes and all the stuff you needed. And you're working with a raw file on top of that. So we're at the point where convenience is there for the DSLR mirrorless. And now we're having some tools like, like the camera dactyl that are aiding even more in that convenience. And it feels, it feels close to the walk away from it kind of experience. And if you're somebody that does more than I would say one or two rolls of film a week, this could make sense for, for like you to have. And what format are we talking about? It's strictly 35, so it's got to be 35 with the sprockets because the unit that, uh, that I was shipped and the one that the folks are getting, it, it pulls a, across the sprockets. It actually counts the number of little steps of those sprockets. And, and there's multiple different modes to the mongoose. Um, it would take me forever to go through every single thing that this thing does, but it has, a, has three modes. There's manual where it jogs everything. You can manually jog it across from frame to frame. It has auto mode. And then it has uh, fast mode, which actually you're just telling it the spacing between frames by counting certain frames and jogging through. And then if you do that, you can rip through some film. Um, so it can actually even go faster than a minute. How much? How much for this? <laughs> so I be- I'm going to get scared for this because I don't remember. But I know the where the Kickstarter ended, they were at 550. So if you got in earlier, they're 550. And I believe the retail on the release units is going to be like 700. There's the medium price point you were talking about. Yeah, so we're kind of we're kind of back to V700, V800 prices. If you already have a DSLR, that's you know we're not talking. You don't have to go buy a brand new camera. If you've got something that's 18 or more megapixels, you're going to see the benefit of something like this. If you have a higher resolution or maybe a full frame uh, camera to use for it, you're really going to get the most benefit out of that newer chip, putting a real lens in front of it instead of using just what's on the scanner. So I think that's, that's where this makes a lot of sense. And if you're running your own small lab or you're do- doing film for yourself or friends, it could be huge. There's a lot happening. Mongoose, negative supply, mm-hmm. pixelator, and let me guess, there's going to be more. Oh, there's definitely going to be more. Um, even, even the folks at negative supply, th- this was posted publicly on Twitter, so I can talk about it. But uh, one of the two guys over at negative supply, Saxon, Yes. So there's AJ and Saxon. I saw on Saxon's Twitter a very interesting little molded metal piece 
which looks like it is their next level, which is automation for the negative supply. So that's, oh that's coming down the pipeline from, from them. So that's covering, you know, on the low end, you can pull it across and keep it flat however you need. We've got the medium end with uh, Ethan's really cool 3D printed solution and the high end's coming. Right. I think this is all good stuff because I, I'm a big proponent. Stuff. I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a big proponent of, of everyone taking control of your own film photography. Mm -hmm. You know, shoot it, develop it, scan it, get in there and, and learn how to do some color correction so that your, your images can look as best as they could. That's a whole nother topic mm -hmm. uh, of um, exposure of not, you know, uh, over scanning, uh, which I've seen with horrible result. And of course, color correction. And then of course, I've seen a lot of people scanning images, posting them and there's no color correction. So it's a whole concept. I'm sure there are classes on this. Uh, I don't know if you guys deal with that Midwest, the art uh, of scanning. Ooh, you know, maybe that so good. Yeah, this winter we're doing like these new hybrid classes where I'm doing like a few, you know, socially distanced five, six people in the classroom, but then we're also simulcasting it. And in the winter we're doing one on scanning your film one on scanning your video, your motion picture stuff or services at least. And then the other one about, you know, editing that. So that, yeah, that ties right in, Mike. Good, good. I would need that class. Any, <laughs> any last words regarding the Camera Dactyl Mongoose Automatic Scanning Assistant, AKA device? Um, yes. I don't know anybody that has a system like this currently. So Ethan's is like the only one. So, you know, you always find, find critics and such with, with the unit and it, it's good to be critical of something, especially if you're gonna purchase it support people that are creating this stuff because as we you know we've chatted on and off with people that are at the retail level distribution level and, and even some of the higher end brands those guys aren't stepping up for a lot of these products so that these are you know very small operations so i always try to tell folks support creators if and when possible for this mm -hmm. kind of thing because that's the proof of concept we need for bigger you know large and products like, you know, right. we haven't seen anything like this from Lomography. We haven't seen anything like this. So there are folks out there that are, you know, still producing this stuff new. Support them when you can. And I would, the things I know everybody would love to see something like this in medium format. Mike, could you imagine scanning motion picture film with something Whoa. like this? Wouldn't yeah. that be cool? It'll put us out of business. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's cool it's where coming. things are going. It's coming. Oh, I'm, I'm sure this kind of stuff's coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what will not, which is, and, and I say the art of because color correction is, uh, you know, I've seen, I see Dave work here. It's hard. He's a it's, genius when it comes to that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. Skill. Yeah, it's, it's a real skill. It's not, you know, it's, it's so, you know, but I, I think there are going to be lots of uh, innovations in the next few years, especially with, uh, with, lo you know, lower, because a motion picture film scanner you have like a few thousand dollar Wolverine one piece unit. Yep. And then the next step up is the, you know, mortgage amount on a house. It so really is. Yeah. There's no in between device. And we're talking about it's, it's no different. Just like I've been hammering that like, Oh yeah, I've been shot, shooting motion picture film. And to me, to people watching for still photography, to me, it's the same. I'm just shooting 24 frames per second. So scanning, all you need to do is, is scan each frame and knit those together. So if there was a device to hit each, each and the sprockets hit each frame, then it's not that difficult to to animate to knit it together. Yeah. So same way there already. You know. Mm -hmm. But there is there isn't. I mean, same thing for Lomo Kino. There's been a few devices Lomography has put out, but nothing compares to 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 scanning Lomo Kino on our full blown scan motion picture scanning. So I, I really think that you're going to see some exciting things. And I, I was on the phone with Ethan. I swear he actually said something to me. And I, I swear that I was like this to him. Like, I, I don't want, I was like, I don't want to hear anything. But I do. You know, I do. I mean, you cannot stop per in innovation. And what you said, Matt, is very, very true. You know, you look at all these bigger companies, the Fujis and, you know, the Kodaks, and, and they can't just pull something. They're not on the ground. No. They're not in the trenches shooting. And a guy like Ethan or Saxon, these guys are on the ground like, oh, what can we invent? Mm -hmm. And then bring it to market. It's fascinating and it's inspiring. And the bigger companies can't do it. Because they, 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 
you know what it's like, research and development, the cost of fortune, and then to bring it to market and then to have, you know, uh, board members to have to, I mean, you know, it's a big, it's. That's the way it used to be. It's indie. Now it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be that way anymore. Yeah, it's Fixed indie time. and it's, it's very exciting. So I'm, 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 I'm there. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying the mongoose. I, I, I mentioned this in the video I posted about it, but like I have scanned more 35 mil film in the last two weeks than I have in the last year. Like that's, wow. that's what it's all about, right? Like yep. I enjoy doing it now. Well, enjoy it more than I previously had. And I'm going through my backlog because now it's not just like sitting there on the shelf, you know, looking at me like, when are you going to scan this? Like it's, I'm getting through it. Yep. I have a workflow down. Uh, we use it at Midwest Photo for customer scan. And it's like the quality is so, so much better. And it makes sense because that's where the tools are now. Yep. Yep. Mm -mm -mm. Well, thank you, Matt. Yeah, thanks. And thank you, guys. Thank you.